Hi, I'm Sean Kutzko, KX9X for DX Engineering. I'm in my shack testing the CSN Technologies SAT Satellite Station Controller. It's a tiny but remarkably powerful tool for satellite operators. The SAT provides full radio and rotor control, Doppler correction, accurate satellite pass information, multiple ways to monitor and track a satellite during the pass, a simple logging program that can interface with several third-party general loggers, and much more, all over a Wi-Fi connection that can be accessed from your laptop, tablet, or smartphone. It doesn't require an app, additional software, or access to your COM ports. This tiny box will change the way that you operate satellites. Let's take a quick look at the SAT and use it on a satellite pass. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you to please like this video if you find it helpful, and be sure to subscribe to the DX Engineering channel here on YouTube. DX Engineering offers a lot of great content, including instructional videos, product reviews like the one that I'm doing now, and live streams with ham radio operators worldwide who share their expertise with you. And it's all free, and it will help make you a better, more educated amateur radio operator. Please subscribe today. Thanks. I'll be touching on several of the features of the SAT in this short video. However, one thing I won't be going over is the rotor control. As of now, when this video is being made in March 2023, I don't have my satellite antennas or my tower installed yet. So I'm still using fixed horizontal VHF UHF Yagis for satellite work with an azimuth only rotator that's manually controlled. I'll do another video for DX Engineering demonstrating the SAT with rotor control later this year. The online manual for the SAT is quite thorough and very easy to understand. It'll walk you step by step for each of the features I'll cover in this video. The SAT communicates via any 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network. Walk through the setup to connect it to your Wi-Fi network as you find in the manual and the SAT becomes just another device on your network with its own IP address you can access via any web browser. There are three ports on the back of the SAT. A 5-volt USB adapter for power, an 8-inch stereo plug for rig control, and a port to connect the SAT to your antenna rotor. Connect the rig control and your rotor cable first, then connect the USB cable to power the unit on. After connecting the SAT to your Wi-Fi network, you control the SAT through your web browser on your PC, tablet, or phone. There's a lot of data on the landing page. We'll get to that in just a minute. First, we need to configure the SAT for your station. After you power the unit on and get all the cables connected, the first thing you want to do is configure the SAT and your radio so they can talk to each other. Go to the main menu bar along the bottom of the landing page and select Radio. The SAT can communicate with a wide variety of newer and some select older satellite radios. For this video, I'll be using my ICOM 9700. The default settings should be baud rate of 19200, a default address of A2H. Your VFO type should be set up so the main VFO is the uplink and the sub VFO is your downlink. An update interval of 1500 milliseconds is a good place to start. The minimum frequency change should be set to zero. The remaining choices are optional based on your personal preference. Once you've made these selections, click Save Radio Settings, then Close. Go into your ICOM 9700 settings and confirm your radio settings match the software settings, or your radio won't communicate with the SAT. The next thing to do is go back to the bottom menu bar on the main screen and select Location. This is where you input your call sign and location, which gives the SAT the data it needs to track the satellites for you. You can also control other settings here, like adding your QRZ logon and setting up the SAT to communicate with a few third-party logging programs as well. Now that we have the SAT configured, let's take a look at the landing page. The top of the landing page has three different maps. A world map, which will show you the footprints of each of the satellites you want to track, a polar map, which shows a two-dimensional layout of a pass as it's occurring, which is similar to many satellite tracking apps. This window will show you the satellite's trajectory as it passes from horizon to horizon, along with tracking the direction and angle of the satellite in real time. The third window toggles between two options, an azimuth display of the data similar to the middle window, 
and a list of upcoming satellite passes, including the time they rise above your horizon and the maximum elevation they'll reach. In the middle of the screen is your track window. This is where you can select which satellites you want to track, and it provides you with text info on any given satellite. To establish a list of satellites you want to track regularly, click the View All button and select the satellites you want to track, then click Save Favorites. Once you do that, all you have to do to view upcoming passes is click the Next Passes button, and a screen will pop up showing the upcoming passes. That screen is color-coded. Higher elevation passes will be more orange than lower elevation passes. A list of upcoming passes will also appear in the top right window of the main screen if you have it toggled to the Passes option. Links to external websites are provided, including the AMSAT current status page and external tracking maps from both SATNOGS and OrbTrack. All of these websites will pop up in a new browser window. The track window also features complete rotor control operations, which we will explore in detail in the next video. To track a specific satellite pass, simply click on a pass in either the color-coded pop-up window or the list of passes in the Passes window. Once you select a pass, the radio window in the center of your screen will show lots of information specific to that pass. In the top portion of the radio window, you can toggle the SAT's computer control of your radio on or off, lock your transmit and receive VFOs together so they tune in sync, readjust your VFOs to the center of a satellite's passband, or even add a new transponder that's not currently listed. You can also make adjustments to your transmit power, your transmitted bandwidth, add a PL tone for FM satellites, or change the mode for both your main and sub VFOs. If you enjoy operating CW, you can change quickly to CW for satellites at the push of a button. The main menu bar at the bottom of the landing page has several options. The control button allows you to manually control your rotator to any position you wish, including pointing towards a specific grid square. The TLE button is where you choose your satellite data source and update your Keplerian elements, ensuring that the SAT is always accurate. Automatic and manual updates are available. The rotator button is where your rotator interface options exist. The SAT also interfaces with PST Rotator if you currently use that program. You can also adjust an audible alarm that will beep when satellites are about to pop up over your local horizon. The Network button is where you go to control the SAT access to your Wi-Fi network. The Location button sets your station's location in the SAT, which provides the reference point for all satellite passes. Additional options in this tab include choosing which units of distance you prefer, configuring your QRZ login so you can look up hams you contact during passes, use of the SAT's internal GPS for identifying your location, and other adjustments. A simple logging program can be accessed by clicking the QSO Log button. All the standard logging fields are included, along with a way to download the log as an ADIF file you can import into your main logging program. The Pass Log button shows a list of all passes you have recently worked. Clicking on the Window button opens a second window on your browser. This window can display several options, including tracking info, an orbital map, azimuth display, the ground display, a list of upcoming passes, your logbook, or a QSO data entry screen. The schedule button allows you to create a custom list of passes you want to track. This will automatically enable your rotor control as well, which would allow you to get telemetry packets from a satellite even if you aren't at home to do so manually. Finally, the About tab gives you information on the SAT itself including links to firmware updates and a way to back up your SAT settings in case you ever need to reset the unit. Well, after that grand tour, let's go ahead and see the SAT in action. Let's work a satellite. So I'm going to go to the main landing page and I'm going to hit the next passes button and it's going to bring up a list of satellites that are going to be coming up in the next little bit. And I see in the bright orange tab, the CAS-4B linear satellite is going to be coming up in about 45 minutes. It's going to have a maximum elevation of almost 72 degrees above my horizon. That's pretty good. So I'm going to click on CAS-4B and choose that as the satellite. 
and it's going to pull up some data. I'm then going to go to the radio window and I'm going to choose linear transponder because that is the transponder here that we wish to work. So it's gonna bring up uh, all of the presets for that information. So my VFO now is set for an uplink of uh, 435.279, a downlink of uh, 145.925, uh, plus or minus. And if you look, it's already adjusting for Doppler. It's uh, querying the radio every 1500 milliseconds like we set up in the settings for uh, the SAT. So every 1.5 seconds, it's adjusting the both the transmit and the receive VFOs for Doppler. So that will take place automatically as the satellite is uh, progressing through the pass. So let's get ready and we'll do a satellite pass. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself on the downlink and then I'm going to start calling CQ. So I'm adjusting my RIT on the main frequency to dial myself in just right because even the best Doppler correcting software is not 100% accurate. So I use my RIT to dial it in when the satellite first pops up over the horizon. Uh, oh no. And so that's about right. So now, at this point, I shouldn't have to use my RIT anymore, and the automatic Doppler correction in the SAT will take care of it for the entire pass. CQ satellite, CQ satellite, Kilo X-ray 9, X-ray, Echo November 5-0, QRZ. Anytime I want to adjust my receive frequency, I simply spin the main VFO, and it will adjust the receive downlink and the uh, Doppler frequency for the uplink will automatically be corrected in the SAT. CQ satellite, CQ satellite, Kilo X-ray 9, X-ray, Kilo X-ray 9, X-ray, Echo November 5-0, QRZ. I'm going to move my ground, my azimuth display over towards the beginning of the pass and it will show me what my beam heading needs to be at this point. Remember, I'm using fixed horizontal Yagi's on an azimuth only rotator. CQ satellite, CQ satellite, Kilo X-ray 9, X-ray, Echo November 5-0, QRZ. Uh, the Delta Victoria again. Whiskey Bravo 8, Delta, Delta Victoria, Echo November 82, my name is Randy, over. Very good, Randy. Whiskey Bravo 8, Delta, Delta Victoria, this is Kilo X-Ray 9 X-Ray. I'm in Echo November 5-0 in Champaign, Illinois. My name is Sean, over. Roger, roger. Very nice to meet you, Randy. I'll say 73, and thanks for the short contact. Kilo X-ray, 9 X-ray, and Echo November 5-0. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Sean. See you later. Bye for now. 73. Kilo X-ray, 9 X-ray, Echo November 5-0, QRZ. CQ satellite, CQ satellite, Kilo X-ray, 9 X-ray, Echo November 5-0, QRZ. Whiskey 0, Fox, Victor, Romeo, good afternoon, thank you. Uh, Echo November 5-0 in Illinois, over. Roger, my call, Kilo X-Ray, 9 X-Ray, Echo November 5-0, over. QSL, QSL, Kilo X-Ray, 9 or X-Ray, in Echo Nancy 50. This is uh, W0FBR in Echo Nancy 35, Minnesota, QSL. QSL, nice to hear you again. It's been a little while. CP. 
Uh, this is Kilo X-Ray 9 X-Ray Echo November 50 QRZ. Hey, KB1HY. Hello, Sean. Well, hey, Peter. KB1HY, Kilo X-Ray 9 X-Ray, Echo November 50. How are you, sir? Yeah, doing good. How about yourself? I haven't heard you in a while. <laughs> KX9X, KB1HY. Good day, over. All right, Peter. Good to run into you as well. I'm about to lose the satellite here, so I'll say 7-3. Maybe I'll squeak out one more. But uh, nice to hear you. We'll catch you on another pass. KB1HY. Yeah, thank H you very much. 7-3, you too. Bye-bye. 73. Kilo X-Ray, 9 X-Ray. Maybe time for one more. QRZ. Romeo, Romeo, Vector, 9 Victor Alpha 3, Victor Golf Romeo, thanks. Echo November 50, over. Oh, what's the grid? What's the grid? Okay, got it. Thanks a lot for the short one. 73, have fun. Well, that was a big success. We made a few contacts on a very casual satellite pass and ran into an old friend in the process. That's always fun. The SAT controller told me what passes were gonna be coming up and helped me choose a good one with high elevation, alerted me to when the pass was about to start, and once I used my RIT control on my 9700 to accurately find myself on the downlink, my uplink and downlink frequencies remained synced for Doppler for the entire pass, with only an occasional adjustment of the downlink VFO needed. I had both an overhead and an azimuth view on my screen screen telling me where to point my antennas, and I also knew when the pass was about to be over. And again, if I had proper satellite antennas with a rotator that did both azimuth and elevation rotation, the SAT would have automatically tracked the satellite for me as the pass progressed. I'll make another video of me using the SAT with rotator control once I get my tower installed later this year. The CSN Technologies SAT tracker is easy to set up, it doesn't require any additional software or apps, and it can be accessed by any web browser over your network. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of satellite operating, and it makes it a real breeze to enjoy this fun aspect of the hobby. You can get yours today at dxengineering.com. I'm Sean Kutzko, KX9X, and I will look for you on the satellites.